without concerted action of some sort, energy demand will not just continue growing, it will accelerate significantly. And so we've had, over the last uh, couple of decades, energy demand growth of about 1.8% globally. Uh, it will step up to 2.2%. Now, the good news is that we don't have to have this picture of growth if we do, in fact, take the kind of concerted action that this group is trying to take. And by our estimates, through these deep microsectoral um, studies I talk about, we find that we could reduce energy demand by a full 135 quad BTU 2020 with investments in currently existing technologies that yield a rate of return of 10% or higher. This is a very important point. We're not talking about things that may be necessary to do down the road to address some of the environmental issues and otherwise, which are incurring costs to the system. These are things that yield positive rates of return of at least 10%, in many cases, uh, much, much higher. Uh, what's 135 quad BTU? That's roughly 150% of U.S. energy use today. That's all dead weight loss in the global system. And it gets back to the point you made. This is the most scalable, the cheapest, the fastest thing that the world needs to do if it's going to take uh, energy demand seriously. Now, impact of this kind of demand abatement would be to take that 2.2% base case growth down to 0.8%. In the case of the U.S., we would actually flatten demand. In the case of China, as I'll talk a little bit, it would have demand, but we still have more to do if we really want to uh, at least focus on the CO2 emission. Now, this energy productivity prize, as I will call it, spans all regions, um, and not surprisingly, to the next level. So um, let me now turn, if I may, to the China opportunity. And again, try to provide the bird's eye view and, and, and then dig in a little bit. Um, the China energy demand story is uh, quite a different one. 4.4% uh, base growth, uh, even after the policies of 20% improvements in energy efficiency, even after the very um, clear uh, attempts by the government to do something meaningful in this regard. And here, too, we see that while China is an industry uh, kind of story and continues to be over the future, the fact that you've got rising incomes and you have households really entering the uh, house, you know, the uh, average um, square meters, for example, for households is increasing dramatically in China. Um, transport, you know, we all know about cars and uh, uh, 23 percent growth rate in sort of car uh, production and and consumption. Um, so we have a base of 4.4 across all sectors. Uh, I'd flag, of course, the high growth rates in um, some of the uh, industrial uses like steel and otherwise, but increasingly residential, commercial, the story of the consumer. And I'll come back to this when I talk about barriers, but it is this um, consumer decision-making, lack of appropriate information and otherwise, that really starts getting in the way, uh, even if after countries start addressing some of the industrial uses. This is uh, the growth picture of, of energy demand. Of course, the CO2 picture is much worse because we have really uh, CO2 intensive energy use disproportionately in China, i.e. coal. And so we see the um, the CO2 intensity uh, growing even faster than this, uh, which is um, a real issue. Now, just as we said globally, we could see an energy productivity uh, ramp up, if you like. In China, we have um, built into this energy demand is actually a pretty significant energy efficiency and energy productivity, which China is been doing, it's actually growing faster than most of the rest of the world at 2.2%. Um, but, um, and, and it's doing so sector by sector, but it's still got a long way to go, given how inefficient those markets are. Now, the good news is that, um, like the world, China, too, could radically change this growth rate purely through these energy productivity improvements. And so we find that that base case of 124 could be reduced, uh, nearly halved the growth rate. Again, I'll point out, this is still a lot of growth at 2.8%, but it's a lot less growth than would otherwise be the case. It would be dramatically reduction in oil imports, which is where a lot of the fast growing is. And again, the CO2 impact is, is pretty significant over 20% reductions uh, purely from these efficiency opportunities.